IP track located in Bangkok, Thailand. Again, my name is Boyd, and in this video we will cover a topic relating to Exam 7685, which is Microsoft's Windows 7 Enterprise Desktop Support Technician. Specifically, we will join a Windows 7 client computer to a Windows Server 2008 Release 2 Active Directory domain. Now, understanding Windows domains is pretty important and significant for Microsoft exams. And by doing this exercise, we will learn a bit about Windows 7 as well as Server 2008 Active Directory. So as you can see on my desktop, I have a Word document open, which describes what we're trying to do here. And what we have is the laptop running Windows 7 Ultimate, and we have a Server 2008 Release 2 Active Directory domain on our network. And what we want is a computer name registered in Active Directory as sml1-xps, and our domain name that we're running here is ittrack.com. I also have a TechNet article on the bottom of the Word document, which you can refer to at your leisure, and I will talk about it in a few minutes. So why do we want to have computers join an Active Directory domain? Well, it enables users to access resources on the network, such as files and printers, and better yet, it allows us as administrators to control access to these resources. So we can allow access to certain things, deny access to other things, we can monitor what users do, how they do it. And the main method by which to implement these controls is through a thing called group policy which we thoroughly cover in our Server 2008 and Server 2012 boot camps here at IT Track, by the way. I won't go too much into group policy now, but that's what this link at the bottom of the Word document points to. It's a TechNet article that briefly describes AD and group policy, and it's a good reference. So I will say this, group policy is a feature of Windows Server products that controls the working environment of user accounts and computer accounts. Basically what it means is it allows administrators to control what happens on the Windows network. So there's two ways that we can join the computer to the domain. One is simply to go to the system control panel within Windows 7, change the name to what you want the name to be, and join the domain. It's a really simple process and this is how you do it. You can go to the start button, right click on computer, select properties, and it'll bring up the system control panel. We can go to change settings down here at the bottom because this is where all the settings are for the computer name, domain, and or work group. So we go to change settings. We go to the system properties, which has the computer name, the computer description, the work group, which by default is work group, and we want to change this information to what we want. To rename this computer or change its domain or work group, click change. So the computer name we want is sml1-xps and the domain is ittrack.com. We can hit OK and it's going to prompt us for authorization to do this. We type in our credentials, hit OK, and we're joined. But this is not the most effective way to do it. So we're going to cancel this out. The second way, the better way, is to pre-stage this computer in our AD database, Active Directory database, before we join the domain through the Windows 7 system control panel. So what does pre-stage mean? It means that we are telling Active Directory that there is a computer object with certain attributes, like a unique name, for our example, sml1-xps, that will join the domain and be a part of the domain structure. And we need to pre-stage this by using a utility within Active Directory called Active Directory Users and Computers. So we can access this via a domain controller on our network. And the domain controller we have is called ittrack-dc1, which is running Windows Server 2008 Release 2. And to get to that, we can use a utility within Windows 7 called Remote Desktop Connection. And I will open it with a Windows shortcut. The Windows button in R pulls up the run command. And you can type in mstsc.exe, which is the shortcut to Windows Remote Desktop Connection, and we are going to remotely connect to our domain controller, which is called ittrack-dc1. So we just hit connect, and here we are. So now we can open up Active Directory users and computers. 
which is this icon down here that looks like a phone book. So why do we want a free stage? I mean, we can do it the easy way and just go in and add the computer to the network without doing any of this stuff. It will work. But there are a couple reasons why it's good to pre-stage. One, it joins quicker. After we put the computer name in Active Directory, which we will do shortly, Active Directory is expecting the name and knows where to put it. Two, it's better for organizational structure and ease of administration. So by default, if you do not pre-stage computer account, Windows will put it here. I'm going to expand ITTrack.com in this left pane here, and it will put all the default computer accounts that you join to the domain in this computer's container, which we do not want. We don't want it to go in this computer's container because it's bad for organizational and administrative purposes. If you have a few hundred or a few thousand computer accounts, having them all appear in one container is unwieldy. It's difficult to find what you're looking for. If you want to manage a certain computer, it's just a big mess. So you want to structure your logical Active Directory database according to your physical organizational structure as much as possible. It's kind of like a filing cabinet. If you have a bunch of papers piled on a desk and you need to find one particular document, it's not easy to go through everything and find what you're looking for. It'll take time. I mean, you'll find it eventually, but it takes a while. Now, if you have a filing cabinet with some order to it, and you put everything in certain places, then you can, when you want to find something, you find it very quickly. And it's the same thing here. As you can see, I've created several organizational units within my Active Directory database representing our company structure. So we have Bangkok, we have Chicago, Hong Kong, Houston, London. Any devices, computer accounts, or whatever I want to put, I can structure them geographically so they're really easy to find. So right now, we're in Bangkok, and in Bangkok, we have two locations. One's on Rachata Road, and one's on Silong Road. Right now, doing this exercise, I'm in Rachata. I want to put this laptop in a laptops folder I created, which makes it really easy for me to find if I ever have to look at this again. So there's a third reason why pre-staging is really a good idea. It's better for group policy. Uh, computers container, the computer's container, which you see, is a generic container, and it is not possible to link a group policy object to a generic Active Directory container. So really, it limits what you're trying to do in terms of enforcing network policies on your Windows network. And you can tell the difference between a generic Active Directory container and an organizational unit. The generic one doesn't have this, it doesn't have a little phone book icon. It's just a blank folder. So you know you're really limited with what you can do with this. So I look at pre staging kind of like making a hotel reservation. If you call a hotel and plan your trip before you show up, it makes checking in a lot easier, both for you and the hotel. They're expecting you, they have the room ready, and you don't have to wait around at the front desk and fill out a bunch of forms when you arrive. You just go to your room. It's the same thing with Active Directory. Active Directory knows the computer's coming, it knows where to put it, and it just puts it in there right away. So there's really no reason not to pre-stage. It's more efficient, and it's better for future considerations on the network as well. So we're going to pre-stage it. We can go to the Laptops Organizational Unit, right-click, select New Computer, and the computer name that we want for this particular machine is SML1-XPS. The computer name for pre-Windows 2000, which you see here, is not really something you're going to be concerned with unless you're working with very old operating systems like Windows 95 and Windows 98. And if you're working with those operating systems, the best thing to do probably is upgrade the machines. And for user or group, the default is domain admins. We don't need to worry about that. We'll keep that as the default. Assign this computer as a pre-Windows 2000 computer. We don't want to do that either because this is a Windows 7 machine. So really, that's all we do. And there it is. It's created, it's configured, and Active Directory is expecting this machine to join the domain and it will allocate it to the right organizational unit. So we're going to minimize this, and now we will go back to our Windows 7 control panel and do what we did at the very beginning. But having pre-staged the computer, it's going to be much more effective. So again, you go to Start, right-click on Computer, select Properties, Go to change settings, 
and to rename this computer or join a domain, sml1-xps, member of domain. Now, a note on this, you can, we're going to put in the fully qualified domain name, which is ittrack.com. You can get away with doing this, ittrack, or if your domain is coffeeshop.com, you can just put in coffee shop. Windows will recognize this, and it will join the domain, and it will be okay. But one, it's better to put the fully qualified domain in, mainly because it does a, a check on your DNS. If you do it this way, and it works, you know that your DNS settings are working pretty well. If you do it this way, and it does not work, and you have some error message, it means that your DNS is maybe having a problem, and you want to check and make sure that everything's configured right. Whereas if you just do it without the .com and without the fully qualified domain name, it doesn't really tell you anything about what DNS is doing. So we're going to do that. We're going to hit OK. Now it brings us authorization. And all we need here is administrator rights for the local computer. But in this case, I'm going to put the admin rights for our domain. Hit Enter. Welcome to the ITTrack.com domain. So we're all set. We're in. And that's it. That's how you join a Windows 7 computer to an Active Directory domain. And I hope you got something out of this video. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.